Hello, it's nice to have you here. In today's video we will explore a saboteur build that uses a very unique set of skills. The Atziris rule is a unique staff that allows you to use the most iconic Atziris abilities as your own. When equipped, it will grant you the Queen's Demand skill which triggers either 2 Flame Blasts or 12 Storm Calls marks every time you use it. It is also quite easy to obtain useful Crucible Notables there. Thanks to the Saboteur's new trigger bots it will cast double the amount of spells, but with slightly reduced damage. This Ascendancy also provides a 30% cooldown recovery rate which is very important to improve the damage of any triggered skill. On top of that, you will blind all nearby enemies and reduce the damage they deal to you. In this build we are also using the newly reworked Abyss unique items. The Shroud of the Lightless provides an insane amount of elemental penetration and bonus maximum life if you can stack a lot of Abyss Jewels. On the other hand, the Boots grant Aura Reservation Efficiency for both life and mana. Since you can easily penetrate over 50% of elemental resistances, and you deal mixed damage types, there is no point in reducing enemy resistances. Instead, we can use the new Elemental Mastery that grants a 25% chance to treat them as inverted and put more resources into damage and survivability. Each spell has around a 1 second cooldown so you will need lots of cast speed to trigger them as soon as they are ready. The Flame Blast has greater damage, but Storm Call provides a better area of effect coverage and powerful shocks. It is a decently tanky character. You will have lots of maximum life, plenty of evasion and armor rating, some energy shield, and apply powerful blind which also reduces the damage of affected enemies. The petrified blood delays part of the incoming damage and makes your leech last for its full duration. Each cast will obliterate the full screen of enemies, although waiting for the damage to happen slows you down a bit. Thanks to the overlapping area of effect it deals a tremendous amount of damage against single enemies. The staff alone will carry you to the tier 16 maps. From that point you will have lots of options to improve the build further. The Abyss unique items with the maximum amount of sockets are not needed for this build to perform well, just the baseline versions are good enough. In the Crucible League you are able to get additional bonuses on your weapon which grant you more damage or reduce cooldowns, but it is not mandatory either. Atziri's Rule is a core unique item for this build. Socketed support gems will apply to the special skills it grants, so you don't need to worry about linking it. If you have a bonus cooldown recovery rate on your Crucible Tree, you will also need more cast speed elsewhere to fully utilize it. Shroud of the Lightless Armor grants an insane amount of elemental penetration and maximum life if you use a lot of Abyss Jewels. Usually, the Abyssal sockets here are somewhat problematic but we are using our main setup in the weapon anyway. If you have to settle for two socket versions, try to obtain one with useful implicit modifiers from Corruption. Bubonic Trail is the other Abyss unique item used in this build that grants you access to even more Abyssal sockets. By using the unique jewel you will gain tons of life and mana reservation efficiency. You will also need a Magic Abyss jewel to gain the movement speed bonus. You will need one unique jewel to get a reservation efficiency bonus from your boots. This one will significantly improve the arcane surge buff you gain from your support gem, granting you even more cast speed and mana regeneration. It is rather cheap so you can look for useful corrupted implicits. This belt grants you one more abyssal socket than a regular rare belt and significantly improves their effectiveness. It doesn't provide any other modifiers, which can make getting enough resistances or attributes harder. You would also lose out on possible cooldown recovery modifier easily available on this slot. Mark of the Shaper is a great way to gain tons of damage for your spells, but you will have to make sure your other ring has the correct influence type. With the proper catalyst, you can get up to 120% increased elemental spell damage from a single item. If you don't need more damage, you can use the impossible escape to allocate the window of opportunity and profane chemistry notables. It will reduce the delay of your spells and improve your life flask sustain a bit. Your abyss jewels can cover your resistances or attributes, but it is best to get those modifiers elsewhere so the jewels can be focused purely on the damage. You will need lots of cast speed to keep up with the cooldowns, or just elemental damage and crit multiplier to magnify your one-shot potential. 
You should use the base items that grant energy shield, it is not as good as maximum life, but it's still quite useful. Ideally you should use a helmet with mana reservation efficiency enchant for one of your auras, and mana reservation efficiency crafted with essences and eldritch implicits. Other than that, just look for life, elemental resistances, or attributes. A good base type will grant you a decent amount of energy shield for free. On your gloves you should get maximum life and some resistance and attribute modifiers. You can also get potent damage bonuses or spell suppression. Eldritch implicits are very useful here, as they can grant you leech and chance to unnerve enemies, which causes enemies to take increased damage from your spells. Obviously, you should use the Stygian Vice to get an additional Abyss Socket. You can get a lot of maximum life and resistances here but don't forget about the very important cooldown recovery rate modifier, which can be cheaply crafted with the crafting bench. For higher investment versions you can use the Shaper of Crusader Influence which can grant up to a 20% cooldown recovery rate. You should aim to have maximum life on every jewel you use. Added damage for spells is very potent here, especially the cold damage which would grant you a chance to chill enemies with your critical strikes. Critical multiplier is also important, but it is only slightly better than well rolled added damage. If you don't need damage, you can use them to get various ailment avoidances or get lacking resistances and attributes. On an amulet you can get lots of cast speed, but you should also have some maximum life and resistances there. Additional attributes are quite helpful, but you can aim for damage or critical strike multiplier modifiers too. You should have some mana regeneration on your jewelry to freely spam with your spells. Your rings are very similar to the amulet. You can use the opal ring for additional damage, but resistances or maximum life are good too. Cast speed and minimum frenzy charges are a great way to improve your damage. You will also need plenty of attributes for your gem requirements. Good cluster jewel can greatly improve your elemental damage. The most important node here is the sadist which can give you up to 60% increased damage from a single notable, as you should inflict all ailments anyway. You could also use the Doryani's Lesson Notable to get Elemental Leech, but it's better to get it via Eldritch Implicit on your gloves. Two medium clusters with bonuses to critical strike chance will be required to get crit capped without the support gem. It will also grant you plenty of increased damage and a chance to deal double damage, which makes inflicting powerful shocks easier. The Bottled Faith is a great flask for a crit build as it significantly improves your critical strike chance and grants a lot of damage on top of that. You can use the flask enchant that makes it even stronger at the cost of not gaining charges during effect to make it most effective when you actually need it. For your other flasks, we recommend using Quicksilver Flask with additional critical strike chance Life Flask with bleeding removal Diamond Flask with additional cast speed and the Granite Flask with additional armor rating. Queen's Demand is a skill granted by the Unique Staff, using it triggers the Flames of Judgment or Storm of Judgment, alternating with each cast. You don't need links in your staff, just sockets are enough. At first you will need increased critical strike support, but with more investments you will be able to drop it in favor of damage or clear speed. The Awakened Increased Area of Effect grants a bit of both, but for the most demanding fights it's best to use the Concentrated Effect support. Determination Aura will be probably your only source of armor rating, but it is still worth using it to get basic physical damage reduction. You will have plenty of evasion rating on your gear, so the Grace Aura will grant you a decent boost to it. It has great synergy with your Ghost Dance Keystone. Zealotry is an offensive aura that improves your spell damage and grants you a chance to create consecrated ground when you land a critical strike. The Petrified Blood splits incoming damage into damage over time effect and doesn't allow you to go over 50% maximum life without using a life flask, so your leech won't stop too early. You will need the Enlightened Support linked with the most reserving auras to be able to use them all. A good rare helmet is also very helpful there as you might need to use a second enlightened setup just for the petrified blood without it. Arctic armor makes you immune to freeze, leaves a chilled ground when you move, and grants a lot of physical damage mitigation when you're stationary. Use the anomalous quality to sometimes freeze your attackers. 
Vitality Aura grants a lot of life regeneration to improve your sustain. It reserves a flat amount of mana instead of the usual percentage. Clarity works very similarly to the previous aura, but this time it grants you mana regeneration. High mana sustain is needed if you need to continuously spam your skills against single target enemies. Thanks to your boots and one aura mastery you will be able to reserve life with all those auras. Thanks to the petrified blood you can freely reserve up to 50% of your maximum life without any loss of survivability. Assassin's Mark significantly improves your critical strikes against marked enemy and grants you a chance to generate power charges when you hit them. Steel Skin is a guard skill that grants you a decent barrier against incoming damage. It also stops all bleeding effects during its duration. Flame Dash is a short raged teleport spell used mostly to move around and dodge incoming attacks. It can store up to 3 charges and the first cast is instant. If you have enough free sockets left you can use the Chaos Golem, which further improves your physical damage mitigation by a flat amount. Killing all bandits to get two bonus passive skill points is the best option but helping Alira is also worth considering if you worry about getting enough resistances or mana regeneration. As your major pantheon power it is best to use the soul of Arakali. It grants you protection against damage over time effects, which is the biggest weakness of the petrified blood setup. In a similar fashion, the minor pantheon power should be the soul of Shikari. It also grants protection against damage over time, but only against poisons. You need 68th level to use the Atziri's Rule Staff, so you will need to level up using a different spell. Fortunately, the passive tree is rather generic, so you can use any spell you want. As a saboteur you can experiment with various cast on crit or while channeling setups, but ultimately even simple self-cast is sufficient for the campaign. The passive tree focuses mostly on getting maximum life, mana reservation efficiency, and critical strikes for your spells. Thanks to the Disciple of the Forbidden Notable you will be able to generate power charges during mapping without the Assassin's Mark. It also makes stacking power charges more rewarding. You can pick up a single small node on the passive tree that grants you a bit of energy shield leech. There is no point in investing more into that since ultimately you are limited by a rather small energy shield pool. The perfect crime doubles the amount of spells you cast. They are used in exactly the same place, so it is hard to notice them sometimes. Usually it also doubles the mana costs, but in this case you only pay for the queen's demand spell, which makes your mana sustain much easier to manage. That's all it takes to feel like a final boss of Path of Exile. We hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day and see you next time.